Thomas and Fergus the traction engine are friends. Fergus is the pride of the cement works. Fergus knows all the rules and obeys them. One day, Sir Topham Hatt brought devious diesel to the cement works. I need diesel to help for a while. Fergus, please show him around. Yes, said Fergus unhappily. He knew that diesel could be trouble. Later, Diesel was being careless. Not like that, snapped Fergus. Do it right. Don't interfere, sneered Diesel. You don't know the rules, shouted Fergus. Diesel was very annoyed with Fergus and started plotting a devious plan. Later that day, he pretended to have news for Fergus. Sir Topham Hatt wants you to work at the smelters. Me? But I'm the pride of the cement works. Not anymore. Sir Topham Hatt says I'm better than you, so I'm going to stay here. It's not fair. I love working here. But he knew that really useful engines have to do as they are told. Fergus and his driver arrived at the smelters. I want to go back to the cement works, wailed Fergus. None of the other engines like coming here. It's so scary. You're right, said his driver. Just then, the scrap diesels arrived. Hello. Are you happy to be here? No, cried Fergus. His driver was scared, too. Come on, Fergus. We're going to escape. And for the first time, Fergus broke the rules. Sir Topham Hatt was enjoying a tasty fish supper when he heard that Fergus was missing. That's not like Fergus. There must be something wrong. I will send Thomas to look for him. Fergus and his driver turned onto an unused track to find a place to hide. Fergus was frightened. So was Thomas. He puffed up and down the line. He couldn't see Fergus anywhere. We could search the old mine track, said his driver. That line is dark and spooky, whispered Thomas. But he had to be brave and find Fergus. Fergus was on a siding. His fire had gone out. Then he heard a sound. It's an engine, he cried. Fergus, whistled Thomas. Whatever are you doing out here? Hiding. Don't want to work at the smelters. Sir Topham Hatt is going to be cross with me. He's not, cried Thomas. He's worried about you. Really? Of course, puffed Thomas. Fergus felt better. Thomas pulled Fergus all the way to the smelter's yard, where he knew Sir Topham Hatt was waiting. Fergus, explain yourself. I ran away. It's scary here. Diesel told Fergus that you wanted him at the smelter's forever. Nonsense, Fergus. You are the pride of the cement works. I shall send Diesel to the smelters, and you can go back to the cement works tomorrow. Oh, thank you, sir, said Fergus happily. Fergus knew he had a good friend in Thomas, and he was still the pride of the cement works.
Donald and Douglas are Scottish twins. They enjoy working on Sir Topham Hatt's rail. But sometimes they long for Scott, their old home. One day, Sir Topham Hatt called them to the docks. Lord Callan's castle is finally reopening. There is to be a grand celebration tomorrow. I need you to take the banners, bunting, and bagpipes to the castle. Harvey, you must load them straight away. Yes, sir, chuffed Harvey. The twins were excited. Going to Lord Callan's castle would be like going home again. Soon, Harvey had finished loading the freight. Where are you going? asked Percy. Lord Callan's castle, Donald proudly announced. By Castle Lock. I'm glad I'm not going to Castle Lock, wished Percy nervously. Scared the monster might get you, teased Douglas. He might, said Donald. There's no monster. There is too. There is not. He's too. He's not. He's too. Lord Cannon's castle is in Misty Valley. Donald and Douglas were determined to get the important goods to the castle in time. They puffed proudly around the lock towards their destination. There it is, cried Donald. We're almost there, shouted Douglas. But there was trouble ahead. Trees had fallen across the line. Donald and Douglas stopped just in time. Then, suddenly, there was a loud crash. The brake van had been hit by a landslide and come off the rails. They were stuck. We could take the causeway, said Donald's driver. Douglas's driver knew the causeway was old and rickety. It's too dangerous, he said. The twins were worried. We'll never get to the castle now, chuffed Donald. I'll call for help. Splendid outfit, sir. So Topham Hatt was trying on his present from Lord Callan when he heard the news. Donald and Douglas trapped by the lock, he said. I'll send help as soon as I can. But the hours passed. It grew dark and cold. And still no help had come. Suddenly, the twins spotted something strange through the mist. What's that? called Donald. Is it the monster? cried Douglas. For sure it is, answered Donald. It's not a monster, it's us. It was Harvey and the breakdown crane. Donald and Douglas were relieved. By morning, the lines were clear. Donald and Douglas hurried off to the castle. Lord Callan's workers were waiting to unload the freight cars. Soon, the castle was decorated. The grand opening was a great success. Lord Callan was pleased. A splendid pair of engines! And very useful, added Sir Topham Hatt. Oh, hey! agreed the twins.
There are many beautiful places on the island of Sodor. The engines love the pretty water mill, the peaceful canals, and the castle on the lake. Toby's favorite place is the old windmill. The windmill is worn. It cannot make much flour now. Toby loves to watch the sails go round. And the miller is his friend. Good morning, Toby. One day, Toby was collecting a load of flour to take to the market. But he was so busy watching the windmill sails that he forgot to look where he was going. All the flour was ruined. And the miller was upset. If I can't sell my flour, I'll have to shut down the windmill. I'm sorry, sighed Toby. Harvey arrived to put the trucks back onto the track. Toby was sad. What will the miller do if his mill shuts down? It's a shame, said his driver. But we must hurry, Toby. There's a storm on the way. Toby couldn't sleep that night. It wasn't the thunder and lightning that kept him awake. He was still worrying about the miller. That stormy night, the old windmill was struck by lightning. The next morning, Toby chuffed carefully along his branch line. The storm had torn trees from the ground, and the farm buildings had been damaged. Then Toby saw the most shocking sight of all. The windmill is broken! He cried. This means the end of my business, said the miller sadly. I can't afford the timber to make the repairs. Toby really wanted to help. There must be a way. Suddenly, his driver saw a fallen tree ahead. Harvey and Terence were clearing the track. Sir Topham Hat was cross. This storm has caused confusion and delay. Remove this tree immediately. But Toby had an idea. Please, sir, the windmill has been broken. The wood from this tree can mend it and make it work again. A splendid idea, agreed Sir Topham Hat. Toby proudly took the tree to the mill. The miller was delighted. Now we can build our windmill back up again. It will be good as new. Toby watched as the work began. It took a long time, but at last, the windmill was completed. Sir Topham Hat was most impressed. The miller was grateful. Thank you, Toby. Your idea saved my windmill. Toby beamed happily. Now the windmill produces more flour than ever before, and Toby makes twice as many deliveries to the market. He never tires of watching the sales go round, and he is very proud that the miller now calls it Toby's windmill.
The engines on the island of Sodor were excited. A new park was being built. Everyone was working hard to get the job finished on time. Duncan was feeling impatient. Get a move on, slow coach, he puffed crossly to Rusty. You're so slow, I'll finish first, Duncan boasted to Skarloey. Skarloey was cross. A little later, he met Rusty at the new park station. Duncan thinks he's fast, Skarloey steamed, but he's just a bossy boiler. Better safe than fast, Rusty agreed. Duncan drew into the station. He was all puffed up and pleased with himself. I finished first, he wished proudly. In that case, said Sir Topham Hat, I've got another job for you. You're to collect the elephant on the sidings and take it to the park. Yes, sir, chuffed Duncan. This elephant is very important. You must be very careful. When Duncan saw the elephant, he was surprised. Why, it's only a statue, he said. This is an easy job. You must wait for the brake van, said the station master. This statue is very heavy. Nonsense, huffed Duncan to his driver. I've pushed heavier loads than this plenty of times. Let's go, Duncan, said his driver. But we must be careful. So they left, but without the brake van. But Duncan wasn't careful. He was impatient. We'll show them how fast I can be, Duncan whistled. We'll deliver this statue, and I'll still finish first. Duncan started to speed up. Soon, Duncan was going as fast as his wheels could carry. His driver was starting to worry, so he tried to brake. But Duncan was out of control. He was scared. He had never gone this fast. People waved, and cars tooted as Duncan sped by. Suddenly, a tractor trundled across Duncan's line. Look out! shouted his driver. Slow down! Slow down! whistled Rusty. I can't! Duncan cried as he shot past. Elephant Park loomed ahead. Duncan's driver applied the brakes, but it was too late. The statue flew through the air and landed in the lake. Luckily, nobody was hurt. In no time, Sir Topham had arrived. He was cross. I told you to be careful. You should have waited for the brake van, he said sternly. I'm sorry, sir, mumbled Duncan. He felt very embarrassed. Duncan was repaired in time for the opening of Elephant Park. He was very surprised to see the statue was still standing in the lake. Everyone loves the elephant in the lake, said Lady Hat. Even if it was a mistake, added Sir Topham Hat. Hooray for Duncan's mistake, cheered the engines. Duncan blushed and went a deep shade of red.
the engines on the island of Sodor want to be responsible, reliable, and really useful. They are happiest when Sir Topham Hatt gives them important work to do. James thinks his work is very important indeed. He is proud of his shiny red paint and likes to look clean and smart. One day, Percy puffed to the washdown. My whistle's clogged. He tried to blow hard to clean it out, but instead blew mud all over Gordon. Silly, huffed Gordon. Percy was trying not to laugh. Keep your dirt away from me. I'm collecting the mayor today. I should do that. Really, chuckled James. You'd need a washdown first. Pah, snorted Gordon. James just laughed. Soon, James had collected the mayor and puffed proudly away. Just look at me, Gordon! Show off, grunted Gordon. Sir Topham Hatt came to the sheds. I need an engine to collect the Queen of Sodor. Who's the Queen of Sodor? A leaky old barge, replied Sir Topham Hatt. She needs to go to the workshops. It's dirty work, I'm afraid. Just then, James shunted into the sheds. This gave Gordon an idea. Is collecting the Queen of Sodor important work, too? Very important work. Do I have a volunteer? Very important work, exclaimed James. I'll do it. Then it's settled. She's waiting at the canal. Thank you, sir, said James. Gordon was delighted his plan was working. I'm here to collect the Queen of Sodor, announced James. There she is, the odd manager said. James was furious. That slimy old tub? Gordon tricked me. He wants me to get dirty. I'll show him. A shiny engine like me never gets dirty. Soon, James set off with the Queen of Sodor. It was a long journey to the workshops. Shiny and clean, shiny and clean, puffed James. Then there was trouble. The tall funnel of the old barge crashed through a pipe. James was sure he'd get covered in sludge. But he didn't. Shiny and clean, shiny and clean, he declared again. The workmen soon cleared the mess, and then James was on his way. He arrived safe and sound, and pleased that the dirty work was done. When James returned to the sheds, he was very proud of himself. How did you manage to stay so clean? I have to stay clean, boasted James, in case there's important work to do. Just then, Percy returned from the quarry. My whistle is clogged again. Watch out, James! Dust went everywhere. I did warn you! You'll need a washdown now, teased Thomas. Good, snorted James. It will make me readier than ever. I'm such a splendid engine. Oh, oh, oh.
Oliver and Duck are great Western engines. They deliver goods and passengers when the roads are closed by deep snow. But Oliver thinks snow is messy and cold. I'm a great Western engine, he chuffed one day. I shouldn't have to shiver. Begging your pardon, Mr. Oliver, said Toad, but I think snow is splendid. <sighs> Later, Oliver saw some children building a giant snowman for their winter festival. Each time Oliver passed by, the snowman grew bigger. And bigger. And bigger. And bigger. Just an observation, Mr. Oliver. Snow is magical. Oh. Finally, the snowman was completed. Oliver chuffed back to his warm, cozy shed. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting for him. You have to return to the mountain village, he said. Some goods are needed for the festival. But all this snow makes my wheels feel chilly. Really useful engines work hard whatever the weather. Soon, Oliver was loaded and on his way. The snow was cold. It had frozen the points and diverted Oliver into the station siding. Whoa, shiver my boiler, cried Oliver. His driver applied the brakes. Is there a problem, Mr. Oliver? Yeah, there is! <laughs> Uh, that could have been a little smoother. Oliver felt awful. He thought the children would be upset about their snowman. Oliver's driver went for help. Sir Topham Hatt was just leaving his office when he got the call. Duck will bring the breakdown crane first thing in the morning, he said. Oliver's driver returned and told him the news. I'll be out here all night, moaned Oliver. I'm afraid so. Luckily, the village inn had a toasty warm room for Oliver's driver. But Oliver was getting colder and colder. His fire had gone out, and his funnel was covered in icicles. I was right all along. <laughs> There's nothing magical about snow, brr. Toad was beginning to think Oliver might be right. <laughs> Next morning, the children saw the situation. Look, a little girl shouted. Our snowman has eyes in its tummy. No, it doesn't, laughed the little boy. It's Oliver. That gave the children an idea. When Oliver woke up, he was surrounded by happy children. Oliver's a wonderful snow engine, they cried. Oliver was so relieved that suddenly he didn't even feel cold anymore. When Duck arrived with the breakdown crane, Oliver didn't want to leave. He was enjoying the winter festival so much. You were right, Toad, Oliver called. There are some magical things about snow. P -p 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 Perhaps, Mr. Oliver, shivered Toad. Absolutely.
Some trucks will get